All right, my dear friend, welcome back to the channel. This is Salon's Block. You are highly welcome. It is a very beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Southeast Asia. You guys watching me from Africa, Ghana specifically, Nigeria, Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, any part of Africa you are. Look, AFCON is about to kick start. <laughs> Let me know from you where you are watching from and who you are supporting. Who are your favorite teams on the African continent? What do you expect from your national team? Yes, my good friends in Nigeria. What are your expectations about the Super Eagles? So are they going to be flying higher or they are going to become super chickens again? Thank God they are not going to face Ghana. Otherwise, Ghana would have made them super chickens. But I'm happy that this time around they are not in the lane of Ghana. So that I, I will expect the super eagles to fly. Yeah, the lane they are, they will not meet Ghana. They will not meet Ghana. I'm not sure. Even if anything at all, maybe final. Do the main final, we can meet. Yeah, then we can now reduce them to super chicken. Let me hear from you, my Nigerian brothers over there on the comment section. Well, 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 well. It's going to be a beautiful game. The continent is very excited about it. Ivory Coast, La Côte d'Ivoire, they've done a great job. If you look at all the stadia they built so far, they spent so much, over a billion dollars. In this economy, this crisis that are happening around the globe, including my own country, Ghana, for, for La Côte d'Ivoire to be able to put up such a structure, such structures, across the country. Look at the stadium they built in Abidjan. My dear friend, they, de they deserve to be co recommended. They deserve to be commended. Yes. Well, we wait for the kickstarting of the games. We want to watch the game. I'll be giving you updates from there, but I will not be talking too much because I know you guys, anytime I post something about AFCON, you guys don't like to watch it. I will, my views, sometimes 200 views. When but when I talk about Chelsea, then I see you all say, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 dear friend, quickly, we move to Chelsea. Tonight, this afternoon, Chelsea has a game in England. Early match, an early game. And I'm excited because it is our home. And we have a good record against Fulham at home. For 45 years, Fulham has never scored Chelsea at home. For 45 years, from 1979 till now, Fulham has never won a single game at Stamford Bridge. And I want to believe that Chelsea, we are going to continue the same record. We're not going to allow Fulham to break the record. <laughs> All right, quickly. Christopher Nkuku has been in the news since the press conference yesterday. And we're made to understand that he's not fit. And he's not going to be fit anytime soon. And therefore, our coach said they are looking to the market to buy a goal scorer. Listen to what he said. Portatino and Nkuku. He was the only player that was performing, of course, in a different league in Germany, but was consistently scoring goals. Hmm? That was the situation before the start of the season, and that is why we bought him from Germany, because he was scoring goals in Germany. Jackson is 21, Broya is 21, and they are young guys who must adapt. That's why we feel a bit more the heat of losing Christopher Nkuku, because we were sure he was consistent in scoring goals. Yes. And in preseason, we all witnessed it. He was consistent in scoring goals. It's a blow. It has become compulsory for Jackson to score with every touch and do well. It has become compulsory for Jackson to score with every touch of the ball and do well. Brower, that's Amando Brower, with one year out, needs to play three games in a row, and that's difficult for him. Dear friend, you know why I read this place for you again? Why I went back to this? I, I spoke about this issue in my previous episode. I brought it back because I wanted to analyze these players. Nkuku out. But I don't think Nkuku alone is the goal scorer in the team. Goals are being scored even from midfield. Some teams, they score goals even from midfield. Let's analyze our team very critically. And I want to point out one or few things for you right now before I end this episode. I want to point out a few things for you. Right? If you will permit me. Kopama, Raheem Sterling, Kasaido, Cowell, Enzo Fernandez, Thiago Silva, Di Sassi, Badashelli, Gusto. Look, I mentioned this player their names because I believe this player, they have so much of experience. Yes. They might not have the experience in the Premier League, but these are not ordinary players. Why? Let me start again from Kopama and Raheem Sterling. These two players played under Pep Guardiola in the Premier League. Kopama 
And Raheem Sterling, they were under Pep, the tutelage of Pep Guardiola in the Premier League. They understand what it means to compete. They know what it takes to win games, these two players. And that is why someone like me, I'm much disappointed in Raheem Sterling. And I would wish that will sell him this, this window. Very much disappointed. Kopama, yes, we can see the, we can see the glimpse of, he's been doing quite well, honestly, in exception of the last games that he missed those opportunities. But he's been, he's been doing quite brilliantly well. And, something is burning. I can perceive something smelling. That is why I pause a little. Something is burning somewhere. All right. Casado Levi Cowell. Casado Levi Cowell, key in one of the league's best tactical setups. They played in Brighton. Casado and Levi Cowell, they both played with Brighton. They both were consistent in that Brighton setup last season. So both players, they have the experience at least a year from the, in the Premier League. They might be young. But the tactical system of, of uh, Robert uh, to Zerbi that they played in, they don't have that much of excuse. Enzo started on and, and played in the World Cup Finals. Enzo is an international player. He, he played even to the level of World Cup Finals. And he is in our midfield. He is there in our midfield. What else do we not want? When you have a World Cup winner in your midfield, now, Thiago Silva, we don't need to say much about Thiago Silva. We don't need to say much. With all his experiences, Champions League, Premier League experiences and everything. And to be honest, he has been delivering day in, day out, week in, week out. So I have no problem with Thiago Silva. Disassi, Badashali, and Malogusto, these are all French internationals in the French national team. These are all French internationals in the French national team. Dear friend, I am not ready to continue to be taking all the bullshit of inexperienced, young. Basically, there is something wrong with our tactical setup. Basically, there is something wrong with our coaching style. Basically, there is something wrong, 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 wrong with our formations we've been playing. Basically, we fail to place or to play players in their rightful position. This has been Chelsea's problem. Dear friend, don't be deceived. Don't let anybody deceive you by telling you, oh, they are inexperienced, they are this, they are young. 21 years. Yes. But with the experience they have, we have, we, we, okay, when did Kylian Mbappe start playing for the French national team or for, for PSG? I, am, I, I was right Alive, I was born. I was I was watching television when Kelebe was 18 and he carried the French national team to carry the champ uh, World Cup. Yes, 18 year old. I saw Kelembabe playing in the World Cup. Kelembabe, I saw him play played in the World Cup at the age of 18 years. So if a player is 21, he's not he can, in football terms that you cannot say that is a young player. You can say he's not at his peak yet. He's peak. Footballers, their peak years are 26, 27, like in Kuku now. 26, 27, 20. Those are their peak years. You can say they're not at their peak years, but it's not about they don't have the, the football knowledge or the experience to play. Look, this is why when we call for the sacking of the coach, then some people are thinking we are. Chelsea, Chelsea, we can go for Victor Osimhen. If we don't change things, we'll continue to remain there. We will continue to be there. Well, in conclusion, before I let you go, Andrew Santos' future will be determined at the end of January. All options are currently open, including him staying at Chelsea for the rest of the season. Dear friend, I want to be leaving you soon. But I brought out those facts for you to know that we have the players. If the players got the rightful coaching, tactical formation, they will deliver the goals. It is not just about Christopher Nkuku. It is not just about Nicholas Jackson. We need to tackle the problem from the roots. Yeah, otherwise, we cannot get there. 
You need to tackle the problem from the root. And listen to this. We are talking about inexperience. The coach is complaining that they are young, they are young. And we are still going to the market to buy young players. Chelsea really want to sign Messino Estavio. He will be more for the future. I understand Chelsea fans may be frustrated. Yes, as right now, it is not great. But I have to tell you what is happening. They are working on a deal for Estavio. They are working on a deal for another 18, 19 year old. Let me leave you here, my dear friend. I will see you in the next one that I will bring my team lineup and prediction for you. <laughs> it's very important. I'll be coming back. My blood is hot. Today's game is a win for Chelsea. And therefore, don't make a mistake. Be alert. Don't let anybody convince you that we don't have the players. We have the players. It's our tactical formation. It's what we need. Our coach, we need to check or work on the coaching department. Even the injuries, the injuries that we are experiencing, it's all about style of play. The injuries, it's all about style of play. Well, 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 well. Let me let you go for now, dear friend. I appreciate your company. This is Salon's Block. I'll see you in the next one when you see me. Shalom and peace.